This is a tutorial about how to use Stripe with ASP.NET. I wanted to make a website that used this, and unfortunately I couldn't find much on the web, especially uh, hands-on videos on YouTube, so I decided to make one myself. Anyhow, to get started, all you have to do is uh, go to Stripe and sign up. Put your details in here, if you already signed up, or create a new account. And <clears throat> basically, all you have to do to use Stripe on your website is have a bank account and you refer, you put the information for your bank account into the details after you log in. I won't get into that too much, but it's pretty self explanatory once you get in. The hard part is uh, combining all the different technologies to get this to work. The concept is simple, but I found the execution is a little more difficult, especially when, when you're looking for uh, examples on the internet. You have all different kinds of examples of different code, such as PHP or Node or whatever. There's just so much out there. But I didn't find much on ASP.NET. Well, anything that I could use as a beginner. Anyhow, uh, let's show you what I want to do. Okay, so here's my website I made, and I wanted to charge people, so I want to show you what I did. So let's say a guest tries to log in. This is a a user called guest password guest okay it's i'm going to change it anyway so good luck with stealing it anyhow uh guest you log in with guest and you click the login button okay so basically here we are my guest uh his name is superman uh, has an expired date of uh march 11th 2012 huh, a year after the japanese big earthquake coincidence anyhow let me just choose a plan Okay, I'll choose one month, and you can use a test card, which you can find the details on the Stripe site. That's free. It's just basically a test card, and you type in any uh, thing you want, month, and year, as far as in 2012, and anything. Okay, your CVC card thing. Now you can put whatever details you want in your form. These ones are these are the ones I chose. Okay, let's charge the verify. Charge verify. Here we go. Click that. No, I don't want to save it. No, thanks. Okay, so it successfully added my uh, my plan to the user. Updated it, no problem. And I'll show you how I did that. Okay, let's get started. Okay, and in here, basically, the most important two lines are uh, uh, this one here. Okay, this adds the js.stripe. Uh, Stripe for, uh, JavaScript for Stripe, and this one as your publishable key, which you'll get in your account. Now, of course, I'm hiding mine, so you can't see it. Okay, so these are two important lines to put in there. Okay, then we come over here to my uh, CS file, and in my main form, to create the form that I showed you, I basically uh, custom made a drop-down list myself. So this is a run at server thing. It has nothing to do with the actual form part. Okay, so you can add whatever you want here. And this is uh, saved uh, when you re repost. It'll, you can get the data from here. But this information here, uh, you don't add a name to it. And the reason you don't add a name to it is so that the data, the credit card information, doesn't touch your server, which is very important. So if you look at all the... Uh, stuff your IDs. You don't see any name equals something. Okay, this is very important because that's what makes Stripe so incredible. Basically, Stripe is the middleman for you. Okay, you're just taking uh, the person wants to buy something. So basically, what happens is that when the person types in the credit card information, it doesn't touch your server. It gets sent to the Stripe server, and they respond to you with a reference, something called a token that they send back to you. And from the token, you get the information to write that information to your database, which none of it will contain the credit card number, etc. And this is very important, so you're not liable for anything. So anyhow, like I said, I made my, my custom drop-down list. This is my function I used to make it. I mean, I'm, this is how I spaghetti program my stuff, but you might have a different way you want to do it. So, I mean, it just saves me a lot of lines of code to make it like this. So basically, it's just populating itself with uh, the two plans I had, uh, one month and one year. 
Okay, and it saves that. It gets that data later on in the postback. Okay, anyhow, here we have the the actual form. Okay, I did all this dynamically because I like to do things dynamically. You can program this directly into your uh, ASP dot, uh, your dot ASPX page as well, but I prefer to do this way. I'm used to this style. Okay, so, okay, so here we are. This is the form I made, the custom made form. I'm sorry uh, that the programming is not the best, but I just do things to get it done at first, and then I clean it up later. And sometimes I don't. But you can change it the way it modifies you. So basically here, this is the important part where it starts. You create the form up here, adding this, which will all be added to the inner HTML later into the cell that adds the form. So up here you have the charge, ASPX, which means it's going to recall it back to the same file. So I use the same file to handle the collecting information and dealing with the information after. And the method is post. And I gave the ID, the payment form. And in here, you can see I have a couple of inputs, okay, input type text, ID card number, okay, and you can see there's no name here, very important, and I put auto complete off as well, and down here I created uh, the same thing, another input text for uh, expiry month, expiry year, and uh, CVC number. Okay, so the basically, uh, the important two last lines here, I'll say once again, is the hidden uh, ID is called Stripe Token. Okay, you can give that a name because you need to save that later on for calling back when you do the post back, and also a submit button. Okay, and the submit button has an on-click uh, equals the Stripe charge, which is called in JavaScript, and returns a false, so you don't you don't get your post back. Now this is something very important because you don't want it to post back for you, and this is something I couldn't figure out. It took me a while that basically what you're doing is you're stalling the post back, okay? So you're gonna do some JavaScript, and then after, if, if everything's okay, then it'll post back. Basically what you're doing is you're calling JavaScript to check if the credit card's okay, and if it's okay, uh, and if the Stripe uh, site says it's okay, it'll send you back a token, which you then repost and use that token to continue on with your, your charge. Okay, so let's go check out the user page. Okay, so basically there's the, Stripe charge button that I called, and it's going to check the values of my form elements. So I get the elements by ID, card number, card CVC, card expiry month, and card expiry year. Okay, it puts those into some variables, and it checks them with some JavaScript functions that are built into the, the JavaScript for Stripe, which you added earlier. Okay, so it checks the number and the CVC expiry date, etc. And if there's any errors, it'll add it to my custom error up here, which I actually put in my form, which I didn't point out. So it'll, it'll find that that ID, and it'll add the errors. And if it's, as you can see, it's a plus the message, so it gets what previously was in the, in the error box and adds a new one. So just in case you got more than one error, it'll show all of them. Okay. Now, if there are no errors and the... And the data that are in your boxes, it'll go ahead and try and process the Stripe information. It'll create a token, and it'll check it. Now here, in here, it'll say, if response error, it'll report the error that happened in my previous thing, my error message. And if there's no, if there are no errors, then it will uh, basically create a token for you. So basically, I'm getting my hidden element of the Stripe token, and there, in the response, I got a token gotten by this ID here. And I'm putting that token inside the the hidden field, and I and, and after that I'm forcing the post back with this line here. Originally I was going to use a form and do this submit, but I couldn't get it to work, so I did it by doing this, and this worked as well. Okay, let's get back to the charge ASP.CS page. Okay. Here we are back in the charge.aspx.cs page where we want to add our library, stripe.net. So we go right click here and we restore, oh no, restore, we manage NuGet packages for a solution. And then up here, we type in stripe and you see what comes up. And as you see here, there's stripe.net by Jamie Davis, which is someone who prepared this for us. Thank you very much, Mr. Davis. And basically, to put that in there, you just click on it and you install it, and you're done. Okay, so let's close that. 
and then you include it by using Stripe. And here's where I load up. I load up uh, the API key using the configura configuration manager app settings, Stripe API key. So basically, if I go to my uh, web config file, I have my app settings here. You can see it's got the Stripe by API key in my. Uh, this is where you have your value. Make sure you set your test key here. Okay, here we are in the F charge card, which is a function that's called in page load if it's a post back and there is something in the token. So if the token exists, it'll call this function. If not, it'll call my other form that I made to get the information from the credit card. Basically, these are just function or, uh, if statements I'm using to clarify if I have data or not. So I'm setting up my description. Okay. And my description also adds my plan. And basically, this HTTP context request form is how you get the data. So last I save in my form, I saved my plan. I gave my plan a name. Okay drop down list plan and it'll get my plan information and this uh and there's the other one which is for the stripe token okay this will get the thing which you set in your source token or existing source id okay so basically because you installed earlier the using stripe thing you can create a charge my charge equals new stripe charge create options okay it's a new charge and to that charge you'll add the information you want okay so the amount uh, which is the amount I selected in my my plan, okay? So a thousand yen, and the currency I want to charge it as Jap Japanese yen. Uh, my charge description, which is the information I created about the user who purchased it. You can put whatever you want in there. It's just a good thing to use to keep details on who made the purchase. And then most importantly, you need to add the token that it is. Okay. Once you add all this information. Then you basically, I just checked just to make sure there's no screw up on the user IDs. So if the user ID is not is okay, then I basically do the try catch thing to charge the card. So it tries it. It, it creates a new uh, service and, and does a stripe creates a stripe charge and it uses the service to change uh, to uh, send my charge. Okay, and it sends it. And if it's okay, it'll continue along here. If not, it'll catch my exception. Um, and basically what I set up is uh, if it's okay and the charge actually got accepted, then I save my transaction to my database information I want. Okay. Okay. So after the transaction's accepted is okay, then I have a couple of functions here where I'm saving uh, the details of the charge to my database for personal information. Nothing, no credit card information. You can save the token ID and other information you can get from using that that charge thing. So basically what I'm doing is I'm passing the charge option to my transaction. Okay, let's go check out the that function. So basically what I have is my users have an expiry date on their uh their uses of the program and if it's expired they have to update or uh, charge their account. So basically it takes the old date and adds and checks if the old date is uh, really old and refreshes it today plus the account they purchased. And if it's if the date's still not expired, then it'll just add it on top of that. So that's how I check that here. Basically adding days. Great function right here. Anyhow, so basically I set up that new date in my uh, users. Okay. And then after that, I'm, I also save uh, I insert previously I updated the date in my users and next I insert a charge into my table of charges okay so in that table I want to save information such as the stripe charge RD the card country the card holder description the amount the currency and the user ID and the date of course so I check if it's all there of course now, if you notice my uh, charge ID, which I passed up at the top here, strip, there's my strip charge uh, object, which I'm checking. And basically, I just add that all in there. It's pretty simple. So you notice here, uh, the, char uh, the strip charge object, to get the ID, is just a dot .id. Now, if you want something more complicated like the country, you have to do .source.card.country. Now, this was a little bit difficult to find. 
It's an object of an object, so I, but I found it. Okay, and the same with the name. Description is right on the root object, and so is currency, and so is amount. And you just save that to your database. All right, I hope this helps somebody, because it took me a long time to figure this out on my own. I'm a trial and error kind of guy and hands-on kind of guy. Even if I read the same page a thousand times, I wouldn't get it, especially when most of the pages were in PHP. And you never know what code is going to what code, because there's so many ways to write something. So... I hope this really helps somebody out, out there. And have a nice day. Okay, lastly, I just wanted to point out that there's a bunch of pages you can check out for references. So basically here's um, all the commands you can use with the, the Jamie Davis uh, Stripe ASP.NET thing library. And you can check out also the Stripe API reference, which gives you a lot of the commands. Like I told you earlier, you can get the card object, the, the charge object, charge ID. Okay. And you can also go to your dashboard and check your, uh, your test keys to see if your purchases are actually going through. Okay, and if you have any problems, you can also go to this site, which is a... Uh, uh, IRC and they have a channel for Stripe and there's a lot of kind people that will help you in there. I got a lot of good advice from people in there, but unfortunately it's really hard to understand sometimes because hearing and reading is a lot more difficult than seeing. I'm a hands-on kind of guy and when I see something done I can see it and I can modify it to the way I need it done. It's just a lot easier than just randomly guessing. Oh, I gotta click I'm not a robot. <laughs> you come in here, 